Welcome to worship on this Easter Sunday. He is risen, but we'll say that in a minute. <laughs> Welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church of San Bernardino. We are so glad you're here, however you might be here. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed.
if you are one of the children, I invite you to come to the garden. Good morning. And if, do any of the rest of you have your fat fish? You can go get them. Yeah. You can bring them next week too. The fish will come swimming down any time that you can bring it. Thank you. So, look at the chancel. Does it look different than it sometimes does? Um, very. Very. <laughs> Tell us, how does it look different? Flowers and birdhouses and the rock and the path, all sorts of things. Why do you think we do that? Because it's Easter, and what do we think about on Easter? Jesus. Jesus rising, right? And Easter is in spring. And even though it's not bright and sunny today, what happens in spring? Plants grow. There's new life. And when we think about Jesus rising, we think about new life, and we think about plants growing, and how every year the plants die, and then they grow back again. And so we have the beauty for us here in the Northern Hemisphere of Easter in springtime in the middle of the garden. And I want you to listen when Steve and Susan, read the scripture. I want you to listen for the part that talks about, it doesn't talk about the garden, but it talks about the gardener. <laughs> and think about who it is that makes us beautiful and makes us grow. Do any of you have a favorite part yeah. of this? Yeah, Sarah? The birdhouses. The birdhouses. Like yeah, Teo? The big flower on the top, the white flowers? Yeah, yeah really that's really beautiful, isn't it? That. I think it's really beautiful. And all of the flowers, she says, because they're really beautiful. Yeah, Rylan? Mm -hmm. You the butterfly, that's your favorite part? The Excellent. Blue the blue and the purple together. So we remember that Jesus rose, we remember the beauty that God gave to the world, and we make the beautiful garden here in the sanctuary as we remember what happened in a garden a very long time ago. And you can listen for that. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for the beauty that you've given us, the hands that put it together in service of you. Bless us as we continue in worship. Amen.
Our Gospel reading from John 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom God, Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapping lying there but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the other linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, whom reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of faith that we proclaim. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. i 
night the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has Amy and William, I figure I pretty much don't need to say anything now. <laughs> but when did a preacher ever give up the opportunity to say a few words? <laughs> when last we left this place, Jesus was at the table, breaking bread with his friends. Then he went out to the garden he seemed to know his time had come. He wept. He prayed. He gave himself over. He was arrested. He was accused. He was crucified. He was buried. He was gone. What did his followers do? What do we, as humans, do when the worst has happened? When we are devastated, bewildered, grieving? Imagine the gatherings, little groups of people talking, probably in hushed tones, trying to figure out what happened, what went wrong discussing the events of the week, the parade, the meals, the arrest, the death. And then, after the Sabbath, they did the thing that they could do. Mary in John's Gospel, the women in other accounts, went to tend the body, to have one last moment with him, to care for him. In Jewish culture, tending the body is still an important act today. She or they came to the tomb. And it's empty. He's not there. What? a bewildering and devastating moment. They've come to do the thing that they can do, to look at him, to tend to him, to grieve. And he's gone. Mary runs to Peter and John. They come and see. They, too, find the empty tomb. They return to where they had been but Mary stays behind. And now she sees the angels. There are a lot of details in that account in John. The wrappings, the head wrap put away nicely 
aside from the other wrappings. And now this one verse where the angels come. Why are you weeping? They've taken his body. She turns around and sees a man. What a bewildering day. She just saw angels, now she sees a man. Can you feel it? Have you felt it? That bewilderment of just not knowing what's going on and not knowing what's going to happen next. To be lost in the middle of this great grief and suddenly to not even know what's happening. The man asks, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she asks if he's moved him. And then the moment. Mary. And she sees him clearly. She knows. I wonder if we've ever had a moment of seeing him clearly, of knowing who he is. The scripture doesn't give them the time together that the hymn does, but it gives us that moment. And like the hymn writer, I imagine a lot happened in that moment. Mary would have taken it all in, I think. The garden, the trees and flowers, the birds, and mostly the voice, the face, the realness, the aliveness, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. That may be. Imagine the joy of being the first, of seeing him die, and now he is alive. Terrifying joy, maybe. Bewildering joy but joy nonetheless. But the joy, the hope of the resurrection, is hardly for Mary alone. He sends her to tell the others. The joy was for all of them, all who see him over the next weeks have their own moments of hope and joy. But the joy The hope of the resurrection is hardly for the disciples alone. We too have hope because Jesus stood in the garden. The resurrection hope is for all of us. Jesus lives and still walks with us and talks with us and tells us we are his own. Let us share the joy that Mary felt. Let us share the hope the disciples had. Let us share the gift of the good news. He is not here. He is risen. Amen.
you would like to join the choir during the Hallelujah Chorus, you may go up to the choir loft during the final hymn. We offer our tithes and gifts to be part of God's purposes in the world, and we invite you to take part. Will the ushers please come forward to pass the plates? in the order of service, but let's sing the dox doxology. Thank you. As we turn to prayer, um, I have forgotten to say this for a couple of weeks now, so most of you probably already know, but in case you don't, Roy Nix went to be with our God on March 18th. Um, there will be a memorial service, a funeral for him on Saturday, April 20th at 1 o'clock in Montecito Memorial Park in Colton. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. With joy, we pray for all Christian assemblies united this morning at the empty tomb. Help us see you, O God, in those we do not expect to encounter and remove all fear from our hearts. With gratitude, we give you thanks for those who are newly baptized this Easter morning in every land. Guide them and keep them. Open their eyes again and again to your blessings. With humility, we pray for this planet, our home. Heal what we have scarred and broken Renew the face of earth from north to south, from east to west, so that your creation may speak to us of your goodness. With hope and love, we pray for the nations of the world, especially those places overwhelmed by war and conflict. We're thinking of Palestine, of Ukraine, of other places. By the light of the resurrection, Destroy the shroud that is cast over all who live under dictatorship, in the clutches of propagandists, and in ignorance. Bless peacemakers who work to bring justice to their country, city, village, and household. 
With compassion, wipe away the tears of all who weep. Give us the spiritual tools we need to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and comfort those who are in any trouble. Send your angels to watch over the vulnerable and sick. Hear now the prayers of this assembly as we name those on our hearts in silence. With fondness, we remember those who saw our risen Lord and witnessed to his resurrection so that we might have faith. May their words and deeds inspire us to sing our alleluia again and again. Passing from darkness to light, from bondage to freedom, from death to life, we commend to you, gracious and ever-living God, all for whom we pray. And we pray together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you reflect, have you heard, have you seen, have you felt the Spirit of God at work this morning? Be alert, <laughs> be open, as the day is not over. We celebrate the rising of Christ and the Spirit at work among us.
I leave us this morning with this blessing from Jan Richardson, the Magdalene's blessing for Easter Day. You hardly imagined, standing here, everything you ever loved suddenly returned to you, looking you in the eye and calling your name. And now you do not know how to abide this hole in the center of your chest, where a door slams shut and swings open at the same time turning on the hinge of your aching and hopeful heart. I tell you, this is not a banishment from the garden. This is an invitation, a choice, a threshold, a gate. This is your life calling to you from a place you could never have dreamed. But now that you have glimpsed its edge, you cannot imagine choosing any other way. So let the tears come as anointing, as consecration, and then let them go. Let this blessing gather itself around you. Let it give you what you will need for this journey. You will not remember the words. They do not matter. All you need to remember is how it sounded when you stood in the place of death and heard the living call your name. May the love of God, the peace of Christ, that passes all understanding, the friendship and joy of the Holy Spirit be with you all today and every day. Alleluia. Amen. <clears throat>